Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with Shaman King episode number 31. All right, the previous episode, um, Yo gave up uh, his, like, you know, like that he said that he won't uh, participate in the Shaman fight anymore in return of Jan's help with Ren. And then we get into a flashback where we get to see how Yo and Anna met. Uh, in this flashback, we also get uh, acquainted with another new character who we've been seeing in the ending uh, Matamune who is the first partner of Yo. Now um, like we we are we're in the flashback now and I'm really happy that we're getting this flashback because I always wondered how like you know how Anna and Yo met and because <laughs> like from the moment Anna introduced herself in the Shaman King uh, she was like I'm Yo's fiance and like you know she was like you know just like that's how she introduced herself so i kind of was kind of curious about how like you know how did they meet and how like you know how it worked out in the beginning so we can see that now you know like <laughs> we see yo was not at, at all happy with the like you know engagement but then when <laughs> he met her he was like you know kind of uh, like like what do you call it like just I don't know what to say like he was just stuck in that moment and Anna just went to him and was like yeah like I'm uh, like you know we, we see the usual Anna like her like direct way of speaking and <laughs> not beating around the bush so <laughs> yeah and we get to see that how um, Yo meets uh, a demon for the first time he was not acquainted with all that stuff and let's see what happens here we can see Masa uh, Matamune he, he he's one of the strongest and we can see that he has like a um oversoul going on now that's another interesting f fact here that i never like you know at least not even yo knew that uh spirits can have their own oversouls and own um i don't know they have the if they're own, they have their own spirits or not but they have their own oversouls like that's interesting and that's like a completely new thing and he also said something about him participating in the shaman fight as well like all of these new information coming up uh, I'm sure we'll get more answers, more clarification about this, how this all works out. And uh, yeah, so that's it guys. So yeah, without further ado, let's get started. Uh, this is episode number 31 of Shaman King. So I'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here. Sync it to whichever is your preference and let's get started. All right, so here's the countdown. Three, two, one, go. Demons. All right. It was a real, yeah, his survival instincts. Oh yeah, Anna is looking at all of this from a cover. <laughs> <laughs> he realizes that. Uh. <laughs> Curse the cat. <laughs> okay. Oh, also, um, I forgot about that for a second there. Um, Matamune also said something about when he was talking with uh, Grandma. You know, that was her name, wasn't it? Yeah. They were saying something about, they were discussing something about uh, Anna being even more dangerous than Matamune think she is. And she might even be able to overpower him. Something like that they were talking about. I wonder what that is about, but... Probably we'll see here.
ok what's the result of all part 2 yeah Hmm. Your turn to it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wait, he he didn't realize that? Wait a minute. Wait, he didn't realize Anna was. He didn't realize. Okay, like understandable because he's like okay. Never mind. <laughs> he's he's. Oh my God! What's happening here? Okay, why is everything so dark? Like what the hell? <laughs> oh my god <laughs> she didn't even come from that side she just opened it <laughs> yeah he didn't realize that Talent. <laughs> okay. Mm. <laughs> Damn, this bath is, um, fancy. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I think she actually uh, like reacts like that to everyone. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. I was just saying this I, in the previous episode, like, you know, Anna was behind them. And. Okay. Okay. Unable to direct their anger at the true object. Oh, what? Oh. No person. Okay. <laughs> Damn, you has been like this from the beginning. <laughs> like this laid back, calm, chill. Oh. Yeah, he's been living for a thousand years. Yeah. Memory becomes a curse. Hmm. 
Hmm. Well, I think you need to figure it out. Oh, he's sleeping. <laughs> Wait, Sean, does spirits need? To yeah, the spirits even need sleep, I guess. Because they've been living with humans for so long, that's why, you know. <laughs> I eat as well, I guess. <laughs> oh, damn. Oh, yeah, both said the same thing. Hmm. It's probably waiting for Anna to tell him herself. What's on black pearl? Okay. Oh, damn. <laughs> Damn, who's this people? Like some, they look like some kind of <laughs> main character of some other anime or something. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Grandpa's really picky. <laughs> What the? What the hell is that? What? <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> what? E What? He, he never said that. Wait, she can... <laughs> okay, calm down, yo. Um, no, I don't think so. Ooh, here we go. There you go. <laughs> wow. Oh my god. Uh... Yeah, it's... Oh, it's talking about Tamao. Well, the whole demon thing is most probably, as I said, involuntarily it's happening. Like, they're... Because of something, some kind of a reason. Um. Okay, she, he can. Whoa, what the? Wait, is, is that demon following her or something?
Okay. Nakauni. Whoa! My god, that's big! What the? Okay, so this thing is even following her or something like it's like possessing her or something? Oh, no, I don't think it's possessing her. It's it's probably just Damn Can't Matamuna do some something about that? Like he seems pretty damn strong, so Oh, that's just a random demon. Okay. No, it's... They're just... Okay. What the? Whoa, what the? Who the hell is this? Damn, this guy looks <laughs> intimidating. <laughs> Gu-chan. Okay, former captain. <laughs> Can you see the demons? I doubt that. Oh. Oh, damn. This one's a special one. Okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> Okay, he cannot see them. <laughs> Put your teeth back in. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes. Well, like... <sighs> yeah, Matamune, we need him. Demon can be defeated by a demon. Oh boy. Oh, whoa, what the? What the? Oh! Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, okay, wait a minute. Yeah! Okay, I, I think this is something related to her power that we, ha we see now, you know? I think this is like a Beyblade reference or something that we see. <laughs> I don't know, I might be wrong. Talking about how, I guess. Hmm. Deal with the f former master in the show. Oh, oh, so how was his master? Oh, interesting. Oh, oh, that's why he's. Oh, okay, there you go. So that was how, damn, he... Oh my god, what the...
Who are they transporting? Oh my god. Um Okay. Oh, it's him. Oh, this was Matamune. What the hell, dude? Calm down. That's just a cat. What is this? Are this what? Oh, this is how, isn't it? Oh, this is. Oh, wait. This is like a flashback in a flashback. Oh, the, yeah, it is how. Oh. Wait, so he was not, okay. Okay, that is how. <clears throat> oh, okay. These are those those two that Anna has now. I forgot their. Asakuraha. You and Asakura Yoken as in, okay. Ah, Reishi. Oh. The reason. Oh, so he was able to. Okay, like people are like you know. Okay, I'm talk about this later. Yeah, the negative feelings came into him. All right, interesting. Okay, it's weakness. Oh, int oh wow, that's a uh, interesting. I was defeated by his own awake heart. Oh, <clears throat> justice and my master. One or the other, yeah. With her own past, yeah. She has the same power that How had. Oh! Okay, okay, I understand now. That's why, ah. Oh. Bad things, which is, oh. Okay, wow, a lot of information. Oh my god, wow, there's a lot of things we got to know in this one episode, like, the whole thing with how then Anna, like... <clears throat> Alright.
Uh, it's been a while we, we've seen this ending. Like, yeah. Like, for the past one or two episodes, we were not seeing this. They were just directly going to the ending. Okay. Uh, okay, this makes sense now. Like, all right. Hmm. Wow, this this ending is really like you know after um. Getting to know the okay, that's it. After getting to know the backstory in a way, this ending is really like you know it makes sense so much and it's so great looking at it again. All right, um, so okay, this episode, um, first of all, we get a lot of things here in this one episode, like not a lot of things, but quite a few information we get here. Um, first of all, there was this whole thing of like you know like them actually, like your kind of not understanding that why Anna, like how Anna was able to uh, recognize him at, at the first glance, that thing, and now, and why he, she is like this, you know, like kind of uh, telling him to go away and this type of, uh, you know, kind of cold to him. He was wondering that and like, okay, I was, I was, I also knew something was happening. Like we, we can see like, you know, in the previous episode, we see how uh, the demon kind of tried to go and attack um yo and anna was behind them that's why like you know it, it was basically i guess it was kind of attracted to anna's scent or something i'm not sure but that's why you know it, it found yo oh i understand now okay uh they kind of explained it here um okay uh, i think matamune says this or some someone like they say that um these demons they have the um lingering um grudges that's why they become demons and um they actually don't have the ability to identify their target you know they they have a certain grudge and that grudge must be because of something in the mortal world they materialize and then when they tr like you know find someone in front of them be it whoever like any bystander maybe they as soon as they say see, see some kind of a human being they try to they go and attack them you know like they but they materialize because of their grudge but they attack any humans that is in their vicinity and that's probably why the, the demon that materialized in front of yo in the previous episode it did not try to follow anna but it saw that yo was in front of him it just attacked him that's why okay i understand it now i was like okay i, I was kind of thinking about it like if it was uh, you know attracted to Anna's scent why did it attack yo suddenly and they kind of explain it here why demons attack like this and it's, it's just in their nature I guess so anyways all right so okay so we get it at the, at the beginning yo was kind of like uh, yeah why is Anna like this and you know all that like kind of saying like you spoiled her and all that stuff he was saying uh but as Kino said, she has her own problems and it's because of that she tries to close off her, her heart in front of other people. And we get, get to understand why she was doing that after that. You know, when she actually explains that it's because of her that the demons are uh, attracted. And... Uh, Alright, so... Okay, so the main part starts from the middle of this episode where we see Anna and Yo uh, in, in that con convenience store? No, in that yeah, souvenir shop. And <clears throat> okay, Yo kind of says that why do you, like, you know, why are you doing like this? Like, you know, answer my question. Did you, uh, you know, did you um, set, uh, send the demon after me? All that stuff. And like, I'm sure like the same thing a lot of people said to her you know and that's why she was crying at that moment because like obviously like someone if someone who is able to like even if it, it, there's someone who doesn't who isn't able to see demons if that person suddenly sees weird stuff like this happening in front uh, like you know uh, in the vicinity of Anna obviously there's like you know blame it on her 
and i'm sure this happened before as well a lot of times you know that's why she doesn't like to get out she doesn't want to interact with people because she knows that people will misunderstand her and blame everything on her and this happened before as well most probably and that's why when you suddenly said that oh like you like you know you are um what do you call it uh you're at fault here you you must be the one who actually sent the demons to me um she got angry and uh, not angry but she became sad and slapped him okay. oh one thing i forgot to mention here um correct me if i'm wrong <laughs> when matamune was talking with kino um you know there's these these four kids who were playing like little tops was that like a beyblade reference because i feel like that is like we can see some characters there who very much recognize like, resemblance uh resembles um beyblade like uh tyson kai i like beyblade was, was something i watched a long time ago and i don't remember ever, anything at all but the white-haired guy you know with, with the little thing in his um uh what do you call that the neck that the little scarf he he's kai isn't he the guy with the uh, cap uh, uh, he's tyson and I, I don't remember the other two guys name i forgot their name i think there was another person who was called max i think i forgot is that like a beyblade reference i'm i'm, I'm quite surprised that we have a beyblade reference in 2021 here but i can understand because shaman king was something that came out a long time ago and i, I think probably like you know uh, the original anime or probably the manga had like this reference that's why they're putting it here because i'm quite sure this is a beyblade reference i'm very much sure and, and the little tops that are spinning it's it's a beyblade reference i'm quite sure about it now that i see it again <laughs> i never thought i'll see a beyblade reference damn anyways uh, there's something like you know um i went on a tangent but yeah okay so um yeah <clears throat> and anna like you know got uh sat there she, she slapped and she was like yeah go back home i know this was going to happen you know this always happens and she was out now here's the thing um those uh, uh those dark energy or whatever you call them that was hovering around uh, along, alongside anna they kind of materialized into a big demon so by the end we kind of understand what's what was actually happening there that was actually anna's own um uh, negative emotions taking materializing taking a form and uh just like how how you like you know how it became it, it was it was the same thing that happened to anna here as well because you know the negative emotions that she felt while conversing with yo you know uh when she, he blamed her uh that negative emotion suddenly materialized and you know like demon uh, took a demon appearance or something like that and it it you know it attacked yo so that's probably it and anna you know like and here's the thing the reaction that we see in the end when anna said that stop don't do that you know to yo or said something like uh, run away or something like that the the demon kind of broke apart and the reaction that she showed there she was surprised that shows us that she also did not know that this was actually like you know directly linked to her these demons you know she was surprised at that moment and that shows that it was really her negative emotions i guess which was actually like materializing as a demon and attacking you i might be wrong though like if i'm wrong correct me uh, down in the comments so she herself was unaware of the fact that this was kind of like her own negative emotions materializing and she can stop this anytime she wants not anytime she wants like in, in her heart i think she has to feel genuine um uh, what do you call it uh concern for the other per person you know if that negative emotion lingers the demon will also linger so she can't just like you know say stop even though she has these negative emotions within her and the demon won't stop them she genuinely has to feel and let go of the negative emotions that's how i i think uh, the demon will disperse and that's what how she what, how she felt when she saw yo was like you know really trying to stop the demon and concerned about her trying to uh, protect her that's what she felt and the negative emotions probably went away at that time and she really felt concerned about yo at that time and that's how the demon went away i guess i'm not sure that might be it but yeah 
Okay, and I don't know who the hell that guy was who suddenly came out. Former Captain Gumakura is out. He seems like a um, I don't know, like an important character because of a character because of his character design. <laughs> I don't know. I might be wrong. <laughs> Maybe he's just like a you know like the souvenir shop owner. Maybe that's just it. But you know, like he, he I thought he was like some kind of a person who sees spirits or something, but. It, it turns out he wasn't able to see the spirit and it was just that he 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 came out because of the commotion that was happening outside <laughs> oh boy all right anyways um <clears throat> okay so all right so then we come to the matamune's part matamune talking with kino and here he explains, not explains, but kind of recalls what happened in the past. So we see um, another person, uh, probably uh, with Kino, uh, who was, I, I, I think who was probably Kino's uh, partner at that time in the shaman fight. Um, he said something about Asakura, Asakura, what did he call him? I can't find that section. Uh, it, it was someone like you know from the Asakura clan who was fighting how at that moment uh, where is that uh, here it is uh, Asakura Yoken Yoken 500 years ago Asakura Yoken probably like you know probably like uh, their ancestor or something you know like Yo's ancestor uh, anyways uh, so yeah he was he started talking about that and that and how how he defeated him uh, 500 years ago in the shaman fight and that means he like you know he was partnered with asakura yoken at that time and you know because he's a spirit and i'm quite interested in how he is able to use his oversoul now without any partner that's interesting because it's it has been like more 500 years more after that so i'm guessing he probably learned some new um, techniques or something that's how he himself is able to <laughs> excuse me he himself is able to <coughs> um use an oversoul without any partner or maybe it's something else i'm sure we'll get to know and uh, all right yeah and we get a little bit of a flashback here where we see how Yo, uh, not Yo, sorry, um, how and Matamune met. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, um, uh, where is it? How says something about uh, Matamune realizing something. Okay, here it is. You have the ability to see demons, yet you do not flee from them. Um, how can I forsake you? Um, yes, I know you can see them come into my arms. All right. Interesting. So that means Matamune has always been special in a way. Is that what it means? Because he says this even before, uh, initiating a contact with Matamune, like, like I thought Matamune was like, I don't know what I, what I even thought, like. I thought Matamune was, uh, you know, like someone that how made a contract with, and after that he became able, like you know, he was able to get uh, self-aware, and he was able to gain intelligence and all that. So I thought it was something like that, you know, but it, it turns out that how, like when how met him, he already had this type of special thing within him. So I wonder how how did uh, Matamune get this thing, you know, that this uh, ability to see demons and, you know, kind of being aware of what is happening and not being afraid of the demons. Now, it might be like, you know, I don't know, like I've, I've heard that, uh, you know, animals and uh, little uh, children, they're able to see these type of otherworldly beings in, in, in the, uh, like, you know, children uh, when they're very young, you know, and uh, animals, they're able to, see, able to see these type of stuff, like demons and these type of stuff. Maybe it was just something like that. Or maybe it was that Matamune really was special from the beginning. And like, I think the main thing that attracted how to Matamune was how he was not fearful of the demons. You know, he was like, just, you know, like strolling around uh, like a normal cat. 
even though there are like demons like uh, here and there and uh, Matamun was also like when Matamun kind of looked at how his eyes kind of like you know popped out when he saw there was these two huge um, shikigamis behind um, uh, how so yeah like he, he's not afraid of these demons and that's probably what attracted how to Matamune and he was like yeah like come to me I'll help you and uh, so I'm guessing after initiating a contract with how uh, Matamune was able to gain more awareness of stuff like you know he can just like stand up now I guess in two, two legs and he can use a sword and all that stuff now yeah so okay another thing I'm thinking about like like, wait a minute. Matamun is a spirit, isn't he? So, oh, okay. I think I understand what is happening here. Um, in in the flashback, we see how sitting and Matamun was also sitting in four legs. So I think how in this flashback, how probably took Matamun with him, and you know, like he was just like a cat. Uh, like a, a like you know a friend to how and both of them kind of stayed together and probably after you know like a matamune is like a normal cat probably after matamune died as a cat he came back as a spirit and was able to become uh, this type of an entity is that what's happening here because otherwise it doesn't yeah like it, it doesn't actually line up because i think matamune is a spirit now at least so it must be like there was there must be somewhere along the line when he died and it's probably that's how it happened you know he was with how uh, up until his life went away and after he he passed away he came back as a spirit and he was able to become like this type of an entity again these are all guessworks if i'm wrong correct me so yeah yeah like now he's a nekomata like he never had the two tails before so it must be it must be that either either he died and he came back or he became this type of an entity after like you know being with how either of that like my guess is he probably died or, or maybe he just became a nekomata like like, wait a minute uh let me just check what like like i don't know what nekomatas are i kind of uh, checked it out in the previous episode as well but are they like spirits that come back after the after they die or are they like they become nekomata um a kind of cat uh yokai described in chinese and japanese folklore uh oh okay okay those that live in the mountains and domestic cat that have grown old and transformed into yokai this is what i'm talking about like I, I was kind of like you know like i was thinking like did he die and then come back or it was that because he became old and he was with how for so long he transformed into a yokai either of that let me know you know like uh if did he die or, and come back or did he became a become a yokai after being with how for so long because i remember that um uh, what are what are those called uh, uh, sukumogami sukumogami are kind of like you know this type of uh, um uh, uh, th those type of things like for example household items which if you use for a long time uh, they kind of gain uh, a soul and they become like a yokai type of an entity like like even a non-living object can become a yokai so i was thinking like maybe like nekomatas are also something like that maybe if like a cat becomes too uh, old and if they're with someone you know and if they have like a strong feeling towards the person who they're living with maybe they transform into a yokai and become a nekomata and that's what it probably happened here and you know like uh, matamuna gained two tail and he he was able to um become like uh, this type of an entity now if he transformed into yokai that means he's still alive isn't he yeah that would mean something like that and that's why you know even if it's like a thousand years he's being able to be alive because he's a yokai now like he's like a pseudo entity in a way i guess he's not a spirit and he's not a living being either he's just like in the middle of it a yokai or something like that and that's why he's being able to live for so long uh, anyways i'm like you know going into like, i'm guessing all of this like it might not be something like that at all but yeah 
anyways okay that was that and then uh, we get to the portion where we actually realized what was house uh what do you call it talent no not talent uh house uh okay okay um here it is he says that reishi without them saying a word um he felt what others felt and heard their thoughts but his power was uncontrollable the rage and resentment of others streamed into him there you go um like a poisonous torrent that corroded his soul here we go so that's what happened so how is like a person who is able to understand what others are thinking with without even talking with them you can just look at them and understand what type of a person that person is and since this power was so uncontrollable it was not like a like you know switch which you can switch on and off it was always on because it was so powerful and that's why like like imagine like every people like you know around you their thoughts coming into you and 70 or 80 percent of the human uh, like you know of human society or whatever you call them human beings they have dark feelings within them and imagine like you know like imagine that if there's like someone who is very evil their thoughts also come into you and it's like there'll be a time when you won't be able to actually uh differentiate between your feelings and those evil feelings you know they'll mix into a bad type of a uh, mixture and you won't be able to understand what your feeling is and what the other person's feeling is like it'll all mix up together and you'll feel like yeah you are evil because uh like you know you'll have this type of evil uh, thoughts because other people's thoughts are actually affecting you it's kind of like this you know like you, you've heard you must have heard that actors you know uh, like they act so many like uh, roles throughout their lifetime so you must have heard that some actors telling that sometimes i myself am unable to understand like what type of feeling i have because i've been acting so many times it, it kind of mixes up with me with my own personality and like it's probably something like that that happened to how here and he wasn't able to differentiate what was happening and he became this type of an evil and like you know had this type of evil thoughts after that it's kind of like a double-edged sword like you will be able to understand other people's feelings but at the same time you won't be able to actually differentiate between them and it might actually affect you as well so yeah that's what happened and he started walking the dark uh, the evil path and uh, yeah and matamone says here like people suffer terribly because of nobles insatiable greed and hunger for power and that affected him and uh, but now it is like as kino says it's not that kindness drives him it's his own weakness it's harsh you know the thing that kino says here is harsh but it is true in a way because you know like it was his in a way you can say that it was because his heart his uh, was weak he wasn't able to uh what do you call that um resist that but as i said like how can you even like you know resist something like that like imagine um, like thousands of negative emotions coming into you damn you you probably need a heart of some kind of indestructible indestructible stuff like you know <laughs> if you're able to stop that stop other feelings from affecting you like oh, like how is that even possible as I said, that's why I say like you know it's harsh here, but it is true in a way, but it's harsh. All right. Anyways, okay, and then um, we see how uh, uh, Masamune is sad about how walking the evil path. That's why he had to choose the side of justice because he remembered how 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 was before, how kind of a person he was, and uh, okay, and here it is. Here, she's another interesting factor comes up. Um, was it you know who says that? Yeah, she says that uh, you must save that girl. She has the same power that Hao had, the power to see people, see into people's hearts. She was abandoned because of her gift. She has grown to hate and avoid people. Yeah, this we are able to understand very easily. And her bad feelings materialize as demons. Yo needs to have her. So yeah, that's basically it. Her negative emotion materialized as demons, which we saw, you know, because of uh, her having that negative feeling towards Yo in the convenience store or the souvenir shop, whatever that was. 
um, the demon materialized because of her own uh, feelings, her own negative feelings that was coming. And this shows that probably, I'm sure like Yo is going to help Anna here. If Yo was not here, Anna would have probably become another how. You know, like it wouldn't actually surprise me. Anna would probably become like a female version of how. If Yo did not come here and if he did not, if she did not have any interaction with Yo. And if like, you know, no one actually helped her. Yeah, you should probably add that. If no one actually helped her, he would have probably, she would have probably become someone like uh, Hao. Because, you know, this is how Hao became the person he is now. You know, like he wasn't able to stop uh, the negative feelings from affecting him. I think there were probably no one to help him or something like that. I'm not sure. Uh, that's why, you know, he fell into this negative uh, path and uh, yeah he started walking this dark path and anna is also going through the same thing now you know she has this type of negative feelings within her she is like you know she does not like interacting with people she always keeps herself shut down in her room and even though she's a very good person this stuff affects people you know like you see how how became like a very good omioji from a very kind person to someone who is like you know is trying to defeat and destroy humanity because of the things that happened to him and even though Anna is a good person, it would have affected her slowly, slowly. And, you know, it would have probably corroded her uh, feelings. And by the end of it, she probably would become an entity similar to how if Yo was not there and if no one actually helped her. So, yeah. Damn. As I said, a lot of things we got to know here. Like how Anna is, and it's interesting to see like Anna, like now Anna has those Shikigamis that Hao had before, you know, those two Shikigamis, those big ones. I think those are Shikigamis, aren't they? Yeah, uh, she has them and it kind of shows how Anna is similar to Hao in a way, you know, like how stuff kind of relate to them, how her whole problem was similar to Hao and how now she is like, you know, with the Shikigamis with, which Hao had before and uh, yeah anyways so yeah that was that's fantastic episode i loved it and i'm i'm really excited to see what happens after this uh, the next episode which will continue this as again you know as well so yeah so that's it guys so thank you guys for watching this was my reaction to shaman king episode number um, 31 if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to press the like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed and comment down below anything you want to say anything you want to let me know and i'll definitely check them out so that's it. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next week with another episode of Shaman King. Until then, goodbye and have a nice day.